Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Business Today and to our earnings special. We are now joined by the management of uh, Sambardana Madhasan uh, India Limited. This is uh, uh, the country's largest uh, uh, auto ancillary company with uh, operations uh, across the globe. Uh, the company has uh, uh, posted a very decent set of numbers. First quarter profit rose 65% uh, to 994 crore rupees. Apart from that, we've seen uh, the revenue surge 29% to 28,868 crore rupees. And of course, the operating profit was up 44% at 2,785 crore rupees. Uh, joining me uh, from the management of Sambadana uh, Madhasan at the moment uh, is Mr. Pankaj Mittal. Uh, he's the chief operating officer at uh, Sambadana Madhasan. And of course, Mr. Kunal Manali, CFO of uh, the company. Uh, good evening to both you gentlemen and a very warm welcome to you. Uh, uh, we will start uh, with you, uh, Mr. Mittal. Uh, the performance has been fantastic at a time when uh, uh, there are a lot of headwinds in the global automobile market, especially in the uh, electric vehicle space, which was uh, uh, supposed to be uh, a bottomless uh, growth pit. How do you see this performance as of now? And what were the two or three contributory factors uh, for profit running 65% higher. Uh, very good evening and thank you uh, for having us uh, with you today. Uh, there are a few uh, uh, things which I would like to mention that this is a strong uh, performance uh, which has been there while the global automotive industry remained uh, flat is uh, also uh, at the time when we have made large M&A payouts. Also, yes. we have growth capex. Uh, despite all this, uh, we have maintained our leverage ratio at 1.5x. And uh, this financial prudence also helped us in getting rating upgrades from Moody's, Fitch and Crystal in this very difficult times. And also a first time rating by Japanese credit rating, uh, which gave us a stable. Uh, we continue to invest in our future growth. So nearly 17 greenfield sites are at different uh, stages, most of them across emerging markets. And India is leading the investment with 12 facilities being set up here, which includes both auto and non-auto businesses. So what we have been able to create uh, with the support and trust of our customers is a very diversified business model, which is further strengthening with the scaling up of non-automotive business as well. So while the automotive business uh, continues to grow strong with uh, m and as well, yes. especially also the non-automotive business is also growing. So five years ago, we had started on this journey because our customers in these different uh, uh, areas also analyzed and saw that we had good engineering and manufacturing capabilities which came out from the automotive side and they could be uh, pivoted to support industries like aerospace, uh, health and medical, and also consumer electronics. So those are the other areas in which the company has been growing. As you mentioned, yes, uh, there has been a lot of uh, EV demand which was there. There have been uh, uh, certain tweakings which are being done. But uh, Madison has been a powertrain agnostic company. So our products are not uniquely modeled for any one particular type of powertrain. Yet they are being uh, they are supporting all kinds of vehicles. So we do see that if EVs volumes have come down, then ICE uh, vehicles volumes or hybrid vehicles volumes are also being uh, continued. So certain models which would have come down are continuing to grow. So that's how uh, it's uh, playing out for us. And that's us. actually the beauty of uh, Sambardana's operations is that uh, you make everything apart from the engine, which is a constantly changing technology. And everything that you make uh, is a necessity for the car or the vehicle that you produce. And therefore, you know, uh, uh, the, the longevity of the business uh, uh, is uh, uh, fairly predictable. Let's get uh, Kunal into the conversation. Uh, Mr. Manali, uh, if you could just tell us uh, out of 28,868 crores, how much of revenue goes from overseas operations? And similarly, how do you break up profit after tax uh, domestic as well as overseas? Uh, uh, that's a difficult one. Uh, we release our 3CX10 or our mix of country geography and, and product mix uh, only once in six months. Uh, 
having said so if you look at the last time round and i think the mix may not have changed very drastically it was around about 2080 20% of our business was coming from india 80% of our business coming from the rest of the world from a profitability perspective uh, i would just make a guesstimate uh, it will lie somewhere 40 60 between india and uh, non india if you were to put it uh, but it's a guesstimate please don't uh, Already. No issues. Uh, uh, the the headwind that the rupee is facing is uh, also positive uh, for companies such as uh, Madhusan because uh, uh, you know a large percentage of your revenue is from overseas. Now let's look at the expansion part, uh, Kunal. Uh, what came online uh, at the moment? There are eighteen factories uh, uh, in uh, under construction. How many came online in the first quarter? and out of 18 how many do you feel operational uh, in fy25 uh there were actually 18 that we had announced two of them have commenced operations uh, in the latter part of the current quarter uh, both of them are in the polymer division one in india and one in china uh, we've announced one more greenfield uh, in mexico Uh, so overall right now we are working on 17 new green fields 12 of them in in india uh, 3 in in china and the rest in poland and and mexico so all of them are emerging markets uh, as you can imagine and that's where the growth is that is where capacities are constrained that is where we are putting in in fresh growth capex uh, the developed side of the world is where the capacities are actually in excess uh, given they have never reached back to pre covid levels in terms of volumes uh and on top of it you have inflationary pressure so that part of the developed part of the world becomes more of an mna play for us uh to look at interesting opportunities that the customer may present us uh, from that part of the world uh, and the growth capex is really flowing in the emerging markets and that's a unique mix that uh, plays to our advantage uh given i think we are probably the only uh, auto component player with such a wide mix of of geographies which a large emerging market presence and hence all was well to how the industry dynamics are shaping us versus our our own geographic mix uh, mr mithil in the 18 new green fields that you announced uh, what is the uh, fresh uh, inflow of funds what is the cost of this uh, capacity expansion see as uh, we had announced that uh, our total capex uh, uh, for the year is about 5000 crores and uh, about 60% of this capex would be going into these uh, greenfield expansion uh, uh, sorry uh, it's the, it's the other way around 40% is in in greenfield sites sorry correct me yeah correct. kunal you were saying 40% is in in towards the greenfield sites and okay. 60% is is more or less our normal maintenance related capex is that are there okay so 40% of 5000 crores is 2000 crores and 3000 is in uh, brownfield am i right that's right among green fields okay fine and kunal Sorry, uh, among so, among our regular maintenance capex yeah. okay no issues so 5000 let, let's get this right 5000 crores is fy25 capex of which 40% is green let's stick to this that's right correct okay. now uh, how much of uh, re- revenue augmentation will happen because of this uh, higher capex uh, mr mit Uh, see the revenue gets spread over a period of time because these green fields are coming across uh, different uh, points of time in the coming quarters and uh, possibly in the coming year it, it, there is a gestation period and then the ramp up takes place and these green fields as you would have noticed also are uh, from different verticals different products uh, for different customers and these include both auto and non auto so very difficult to uh, suggest exactly what is the kind of revenue will they will generate just now because it's okay. over a period of time but the kind of uh, capital expenditure which we are doing uh, would uh, give you an idea that there is a yes. uh, demand and this is backed up by the customers because customers orders are there they are ramping up their capacities or they have given us the orders and hence we are setting up the capacities for them okay uh, kunal would you estimate uh, how much of this uh, capacity would come on stream in fy25 mm, i think there are four or five of them i don't know 
Yeah, there are around about five of them which will be coming uh, in this financial year uh, in different parts of the quarter. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Mr. Mittal, let's now look at the business in uh, uh, the way the opportunities are there for Indian manufacturers. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, about 6 of uh, 80. That makes it 33% of this capacity, fresh capacity is coming overseas. Now, what kind of demand are you seeing coming in from your foreign customers? And what are the areas where you see this demand improving? See, our expansion outside India is happening, as Kunal mentioned, again in developing economies. As we see uh, growth uh, and setting up of new plants of our customers, so we are setting up some plants in Mexico to support them, similarly in China, and uh, the plant in Poland to support our customers. So these are coming uh, outside India in these geographies. The rest of the growth, the greenfield sites are coming in India, both auto and non-auto. Okay. Uh, I read from your presentation that uh, uh, there is uh, this uh, Red Sea crisis that uh, all of us are now sort of being apprehensive about uh, has resulted in a lot of uh, increase, not only in transit time, but also uh, an inventory buildup at your end. How would you sort of uh, granularly explain this to viewers? What has happened here? And as a percentage of overall transport cost, how much has container cost gone up by? See, as far as Madison is concerned, uh, at a macro picture uh, level, you would find that most majority of our manufacturing is in the same geography where our customers are located. Hmm. So we... Uh, do not transport finished goods uh, long distance. So we are, it's not like we are manufacturing it in one, one uh, continent and supplying to the other. So our businesses, our factories in Europe are supporting our customers in Europe. Similarly, in North America, customers based in Americas, either we manufacture in America or we are manufacturing in Mexico. And uh, same as in China, that uh, our facilities in China are not exporting. They are mainly supporting the customers in China. And uh, same cases in India. So here, the logistics cost impact us in terms of the material flow, input parts, if they're coming in. As you know, supply chain is global. So mm -hmm. it's not uh, like it's impacting us on a very big scale on a overall uh, revenue perspective. But yes, if you are manufacturing and exporting something from India or from the Middle East, or if parts are coming in from one side of the world to the other side as child inputs, then uh, those input components, that's where we have to maintain uh, higher inventory levels and also the container costs have gone up. So the uncertainty of delivery goes up. So uh, so this inventory buildup is happening at uh, uh, Sambardana Madhasan, Madhasan's end because of uh, delay in transport of uh, raw materials. Uh, for some of the parts. So if you will see that on an overall basis, our drive has been continuously to improve upon our working capital requirement. Mm -hmm. But somewhere, if there is a sluggishness which comes in, some portion of it is due to this uncertainty and you want to protect your end customer uh, to not face any difficulties. You have a debt of about 17,350 crores. And of course, uh, uh, a very nice uh, uh, debt ratio, which has been appreciated by rating agencies. Uh, in the next nine months or so, do you see this uh, ratio uh, improving? Uh, is there a plan to cut down on this debt or uh, are there chances that this debt will go higher? So we will continue to see improvement on an organic level except uh, if any acquisitions happen. So that's a different matter but organically it should be better. Okay. My final question to you Mr. Mittal. Uh, what would you like to leave uh, shareholders and investors with as uh, two or three final thoughts for the coming uh, two or three quarters from Sambardana Madhasan? I would say that Madhasan has created a very strong growth engine. Uh, we have deleveraged ourselves. We have uh, the very good ability to grow further. We have tried to de-risk ourselves by uh, growing in different geographies into different products with different customers. And also uh, created over the last five years, new nascent businesses which are growing very fast into the non-automotive side as well. So uh, as uh, the, in the next coming quarters and years, uh, we hope that we continue to meet the expectations of our investors and our customers. Right, uh, Mr. Mittal, thank you so much and all the good luck to you.
for the coming nine months and of course uh, the many years ahead. Have a nice day, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir.